in the headlines. Building collapse kills three children in Jagar. People's Democratic Party approves constitution of presidential campaign structure for the 2023 general elections. Stakeholders reaffirm commitments to quality education as World Marks Literacy Day. And tributes pouring after death of longest serving British monarch. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Zainab Bala. Hello and a warm welcome. The police command in Jigawa has confirmed the death of three children in a building collapse in Duse, local government area of the state. The command's public relations officer, PPRO DSP Lawal Shisu, who confirmed this in a statement on, Tuesday, on Thursday in Duse, explained that the incident occurred on Wednesday morning in Yakase area of Jigawa's Ada village due to heavy rains. The police PRO explained that upon receipt of the report, police moved to the scene evacuated the victims and rushed them to General Hospital Duzi. However, the three children had died on the spot before they could be rescued, as was certified by a medical doctor on duty. The PPRO added that the remains of the deceased have since been released to their families for burial. It is the second incident in a week as the building caved in on Sunday night, killing a housewife in Guaram local government area of Jigar State after a heavy rainfall. The National Executive Committee of the People's Democratic Party has approved the constitution of the presidential campaign structure for the 2023 general elections. The NEC in unison passed a vote of confidence on the National Working Committee on the leadership of Senator Iyocha Ayu for steering the activities of the party. The resolution of the NEC was made during its 97th meeting held on Thursday in Abuja. Spokesperson of the party, Debo Olugunagba, stated that the NEC further accepted the resignation of the chairman of the Board of Trustees, Senator Walid Jabril, and accepted the nomination of Senator Adolfo Zwabara, the secretary of the board, as acting chairman of the board. On the campaign structure, the NEC approved the proposed structure and organogram of the National Campaign Council as well as the National Campaign and Management Council for the 2023 general elections. The Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashola, has called on Nigerians to fully exercise their voting rights in the next year's general elections, as this will determine the quality of service delivered by leaders that will emerge. Fashola, who made the call in Lagos on Thursday, advised Nigerians to pay more attention to local elections in their domains during next year's general elections in Nigeria. The report. The conversation on the 2023 elections continues to throw up different angles for the electorate to ponder on. Fora like these opens up the conversation about what expectations people should have about governance going forward. Even politicians that are still in the fray are advising their contemporaries about what is expected from them by the electorates. For instance, Minister of Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola is urging politicians to focus on issues that affect the majority of voters. They can do more to focus on conversations that affect the majority of potential voters. That is what I mean about shaping the news. I am certain that you will agree with me that the majority of potential voters will be more likely interested to know if there is any plan to improve their children's education and access to health care. Older politicians have lost confidence in the type of politics played in the country, which they believe has brought the country to crossroads. Elder statement Tanko Yakasei, for instance, wants Nigerians to focus on changing the model of democracy being used rather than the forthcoming elections. With less than six months to the upcoming general elections in the country, there have been continuous efforts to sensitize all stakeholders and Nigerians on how to extract maximum benefits from the governments at all levels that will be ushered in by the 2023 elections. The leadership and members of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, Imo State Chapter, have come out to seek divine intervention for the unity peace and development of the state and Nigeria at large.
In a prayer session held at Dindubisi Kanu Square in Obere, the state capital, clergy, one after the other, took time to offer prayers to God for the well-being of the state, especially the, the insecurity that is bedeviling the state. The state governor, Senator Hope Ozodima, who graced the occasion, expressed gratitude to the religious leaders for standing by him in the fight against insecurity and other evils destroying the peace of the state. Because our government is a God-fearing government. As long as you are God-fearing, you are my friend. As long as you are God-fearing, you are my brother, you are my sister. I have no accommodation for Satan. I have told Satan to go his own way. Father, I pray that the youths of our nation and our states all over Nigeria will listen to the counsel of the elders. Every power that will ignite any criminality in this state from today will be a bygone. May we have peace in this land. May we be able to move about in this land. May we be able to return back to having vigils in our churches. May we be able to look at the marketplace and have confidence to buy goods. It's been a, um, a, a hard cry for every one of us. And today this is more like a dream come true for us. And um, we want to say that this is the beginning of a new emo state. And also, I, as I sat there, uh, just praying that God will bless the leadership of both Khan and the state uh, government for this initiative. He must said, need the mercy of God. We need to give God praise. We need to give God thanks because we've been able to survive the tsunami of insecurity in Imo State. I believe in the prosperity and progress of Imo State. Shared prosperity. Let me just simply put that Imo youth should key into the vision of His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Hope Uzodema, for the betterment of Ndimo. So we're here to witness the, the annual convention of Imolites in the quest to pray for Imo peace, unity and progress under the distinguished governorship of His Excellency, District Senator Hope Uzodema. Yeah, we will achieve a desired result because we have it all here. In a very sad news, a 14-year-old girl, Mariam Salisu, has been killed in the outskirts of Babeli community of just north local government area of Plata State. The relatives of the deceased told Trust TV's Adu Musa that Mariam's body was found in a trench with vital organs missing. The mother, Fatima Daladi, couldn't hold back tears as narrated her last encounter with her daughter. We have left everything to Allah. Everyone has their own way of departing Mother Earth. I believe that is how Allah wanted it to happen. I'm reporting the culprit to the Almighty. It is now between him and the Creator. Aisha Sani is one of the girls that witnessed the incident. She also couldn't hold back tears. We were together when suddenly the man hit Maria on her head. We started begging him to leave her alone because we couldn't understand what she did to deserve the hitting. According to Sani Babale, a resident and former councillor of the area, the deceased alongside 12 other girls went to a nearby bush to fetch firewood when Fatima was attacked while the rest of them ran for safety. <laughs> The incident occurred around 2 p.m. The friends who went to the bush with her reported to us that when the man hit her with the bamboo, they begged him to leave her alone, but he refused and dragged her into the bush. When some residents of the community went to the scene of the incident, they did not find the man and Maria. We all returned home and got back the following morning and found her body in a hole with some of her vital organs removed. It is painful. We have never experienced something like this before. We are calling on Patrick State Police Command to deploy more security personnel in the area. Residents of the community who came to sympathize with the victim's family 
Call on the Plateau State Police Command and other security agencies to provide more security personnel in the area as activities of criminals have increased in recent times. Adam Musa, Trust TV News, Joss. The Managing Director, North East Development Commission, Muhammad Al Ali, says resettlement of internally displaced persons and out of school challenges remain the biggest challenges that the organization has to contend with. Speaking to newsmen at State House Abuja on Thursday, Al Ali said the commission would need at least 31.05 trillion naira to implement the North East Stabilization and Development Master Plan in the next 30 years. Kaindia Modu was there. Resettling persons displaced by insurgency is not an easy assignment to venture into, especially as many of the ancestral homes of these persons have been raised to the ground without a trace. It's a task the NEDC has been saddled with and is compounded by the reluctance of the IDPs to return home because they have settled down in whose communities they fled to. Nevertheless, the Commission has constructed and handed over 1,000 housing units to the Borno State Government. If this is added to the IDP city built for the inhabitants displaced by the 13-year-old insurgency, it will go a long way. Nobody wants to go back to his own ancestral land or whatever. But there are way of doing it in most cases. There are some international norms or protocols you have to follow, right? And also, for them to go back, there have to be certain fundamental things that would assist them to stay when they go back. There is no point taking people back and creating secondary issues again. So all what's happening is, is a process we are following. As I said earlier, it's not an event that people must say today. It's a process. And people go to where they are safe, as they said, uh, voluntarily and to a secure environment. The second twin challenge is out of school children, aggravated by the Almagiri problem in the region and the large number of orphans produced by the conflict. To address the problem, the NEDC has created an education endowment fund with a seed capital of 6 billion naira. It plans to dedicate 10% of its annual allocation to the fund. The number one problem we started with in the Northeast when the insurgency came in was the issue of out of school children. Displacement. Everybody was displaced. Uh, they continue to be displaced, unfortunately, till today. And uh, when we came in as an EDC, actually, we now quickly said, how do we address the issue of out of school children first? in the Almagiri system, because they are linked, they are interwoven. So we now decided that issue of uh, the Northeast Development Commission Education Endowment Fund to handle the school system at the, tertiary, I mean, at the primary level and then even up to the tertiary to mop up the people that are already known, because most of them are not known. They are not privileged to be identified. Even, the, even though the census is going on, by the grace of God, we'll get the numbers from time to time but most of them are not known. There is still a lot more in the kitty with the Commission spending about 5.6 billion naira on the execution of 647 projects ranging from agriculture, health, education, energy and power across 112 local government areas in the Northeast. The NEDC was inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari in 2017 to coordinate all humanitarian interventions by government, ministries, departments and agencies based on the Northeast Stabilization Master Plan. From State House Abuja, Kende Amudu, Trust TV News. There are indications that Adama State, one of the northwestern states affected by the decade-long insurgency, which affected different sectors including education, is now recovering. This came to the fore at an event put together by Strengthening Education in Northeast Nigeria Project in partnership with stakeholders on education to commemorate World Literacy Day in Yola. Salis Lawal has more. Pupils from different schools were brought together to celebrate the World Literacy Day and at Boosty Road in Culture. The Gagoraya family was in their sitting room watching the national news. The news hour was sacrosanct. Mr. Adegoroyo. All hope was gone, and there seemed to be no way out. Then came out of the blue a very beautiful light that seemed like the moonlight. It looked so bright that Mola Badmouth was an exceptionally brilliant boy. Despite the stupidity 
hail from a wealthy who had traveled to the state on government scholarship to study accountancy. He had really studied hard and he had emerged as one of the best students in the national examination conducted for secondary school students in the country. Glanded by the people's level of comprehension, stakeholders committed themselves to the improvement of literacy in the state. Although strengthening education in Northeast Nigeria project has recorded successes so far, they say more need to be done by parents to ensure that their children and words are enrolled in schools. Uh, there is no point allowing children to go complete primary school, go to secondary school, complete secondary school, they cannot read and they are not able to, uh, to write. Then we are just wasting our time and we are wasting the precious period of these uh, young ones as well. So to mark this International uh, Literacy Day, we are saying that parents should also engage uh, to see that teachers do their work very well. The strengthening of the basic education system, especially the early grade learners, which is the foundation upon which education is built, the state government in collaboration with SENSE and you said funded project and better improve the reading competency of about 70% of P1, P2 and P3 learners in the state. Advanced literacy helps to reduce poverty as more people will be empowered for better results in life. Silas Lowen, Trust TV News, Yola. The Governing Council of the University of Ilori has announced Professor Wahab Ogbewole as the new Vice Chancellor of the University. Addressing journalists, the Chairman, Governing Council of the University, Abidu Yazid, said the Council approved his appointment after rigorous process. The Council, he said, looked for candidates who would support and be sympathetic to the needs of the students and interface with other faculties. The new Vice Chancellor, who will be the twelfth one, would resume by October 15th when the tenure of the present Vice Chancellor will elapse. By the 15th of October 2022, the Council of the University began the process of appointing a new Vice Chancellor as far back as March 2022. We advertised nationwide for applications and also through our website. We eventually received 29 applications for this effort. And even before all the applications were turned in, we mounted another process, another complementary process, by which we reached out to no less than 56 other people in various universities and institutions whom we thought might wish to apply, but who, for one reason or the other, were not able to do so. When the applications were received, our council constituted a selection board to assess and the shortlist all the suitable candidates that we can lay our hands on. In the end, we shortlisted 13 candidates who fulfilled our advertisement and other conditions. We interacted with them and processed the application over a period of four days. We checked and double checked their credentials we closely questioned and probed each one of them to make sure that they would support and fulfill the vision and the mission of our university. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up. Negative effect of expired products and well-being of consumers. Details of this story and more after the break. To stay.
Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update, our top stories. Building collapse kills three children in Jigawa. People's Democratic Party approves constitution of presidential campaign structure for the 2023 general elections. Still ahead, furniture makers in Joss, the plastic capital, are decrying the high cost of logistics used in making furniture. They are also complaining of low patronage as a result of the soaring prices of materials in recent time. Adol Musa takes a look at how the carpenters in Joss are coping in the face of inflation. His report. According to a research conducted in June 2022 by Pew Research Center, Inflation rates have doubled in 37 out of 44 advanced countries in the world. High cost of living has become a global phenomenon, especially among the half notes of the society. In Jos, the capital of Plateau State, carpenters are also passing through difficulties as they try to cope with the high cost of living, which has negatively impacted their businesses. It has been so difficult because that's the word that we use for it now. For which we even buy the material we are using for the work, it's too expensive. Presently, we are living from hand to mouth. Because for you to, initially, we used to keep food at least for a week. These days, you have to come to work, struggle as much as possible so that you get one you eat for that day. That is how we are living currently. Chairman, Plateau State Carpenters Association, Shuaibo Ali, said some other members have left the business due to the impact of inflation. The high cost of living has indeed affected our business. Many of us have left the business while some have even run out of the town because they are indebted. The materials we use in making the furniture are very expensive. Everything has either doubled or tripled. There has also been low patronage. We are appealing to government to hear our cry and make things easy for us. The logistics are very expensive. When we tell our customers that the price of materials has gone higher, they complain that they can't afford. Customers are no longer coming like before. Feeding the family has become very difficult. We really need help. As the effect of the high cost of living in Nigeria is continuing to affect many, Experts say the trend would subsequently affect the economic growth of the country if nothing is done to address it. Adomusha, Trust TV News. The negative effect of expired products on the well-being of consumers has called for the need to address the menace of unapproved and unsafe production. In this report, Trust TV's Aisha Salu examines the role of regulators and traders in curbing the menace. Consumption of expired food items, according to experts, have negative impact on health and wellness of the consumers. These can lead to a number of health challenges that may ultimately require hospitalization. Hence, ensuring that a proper check is done on every product to ascertain its validity for usage through the information of best before date or expiry date displayed on the package is pertinent. For traders who experience the repackaging of expired products by manufacturers or may have had to deal with purchasing these substandard products ignorantly over time, they say it's bound on them to dispose of upon discovery instead of putting prospective customers at harm's way. Immediately I find out that this almost is fine. I share it out. I dash it out because I don't want a situation whereby somebody will buy a goose and find out that it's expired to return it back. I don't like such. I don't say it out and I don't return it back because I know returning it back they are losing. So I prefer for me to lose. I will ask the first one that is selling market before I buy. This thing you need to expire, I you don't expire. Maybe you tell me the truth. If the thing expire, I don't go buy. I can check it by myself before I buy. I will carry and call my shop to sell for my fee Although the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission said its memorandum of understanding with other sector regulators like Standard Organization of Nigeria and the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration Control gives them the right to continue to work towards achieving total eradication of the menace, they are calling on members of the public to report such cases, adding that 
customer education is paramount. Products have best before dates. They have their expiry dates that are usually displayed. Most people don't look at the things before they buy uh, products, and we encourage them. It's part of our consumer education and awareness that we do. The responsibility of the uh, supplier to make sure that this uh, information data is given on all purchased products so that the buyer is informed and makes an informed decision. And we go on inspections to supermarkets, to markets, open markets and find out whenever we find that things, we will seize them. We see them and bring them back to us here. We look at them, we find out, we work together, of course, with NAFDAQ and so on. Find out if they are really gone against the law and we'll go ahead and prosecute. The FCCPC says there are a number of suspected cases of repackaging of expired food items under investigation and others awaiting cut verdicts. The agency then called on the public to support the fight against such unwholesome activities that are detrimental to the health of people. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And on the foreign scene, mourners around the world paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth II by laying flowers and leaving messages at embassies and cathedrals as world traders, world leaders rather, continue to send in their condolences. King Charles III, who became the new monarch immediately after his mother's death, will return to London. Address the nation and meet British Prime Minister Liz Truss. And that's it on news update. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Zainab Bala. Thank you for watching.